Hey there, I'm Nav, I'm a dev, and today I want to talk about how to build robust Spellkit applications. Um, yeah, I want to talk about this because um, there are just some things that I've realized just, um, I mean, in the past couple of apps that I've built. Yeah, just some little quality of life things, user experience things, security things um, concerning Svelkit security or application security. And yeah, consider this as a, like a kind of random me app about things um, that I think are quite important in your Svelkit application. So yeah, let's go. We have this little app that I've built um, called Kilometer Challenge. Um, it has been a personal project that I've built from my rowing club because basically um, in our, when we were on break or when we are on break, we uh, always do like these kilometer challenges, meaning that uh, we collect kilometers in various different um, kinds of sports. So for example, swimming, cycling, rowing, um, cross country skiing, stuff like that. And then we just go ahead and make an entry for, of the, for all of these things. Um, and what makes this kind of special is that not every kilometer counts like always the same. So for example, uh, if you go to discipline here, this is of course a demo, um, we have swimming and cycling, um, but they don't, uh, count the same amount. Um, as you can see, swimming has a multiplicator of 15 while cycling has only, only has a, a multiplicator of one. So I can show this to you. Currently, I got 16 um, points or yeah, 16 points and uh, 60 points. I mean, sorry. And I've made four kilometers in swimming. Um, you can also see this down here. Uh, hello. In our latest activities. Um, and let's say I made 45 kilometers of cycling today. Add this into here. Hello. And my score, I don't know what's happening right now. And my score is updated right here. This should be much more cleaner. Let's try that again. <sighs> yeah, right here, see? Um, so yeah, I've made these, um, this for my rowing club and it's actually been quite a success. Like the people really liked it. I've made it a good user experience and even, um, for example, my coach, which is not really, it's not really a digital native. Let's call, call it like that. Could easily create a challenge, create a club and all of that. First of all, um, I'm working with better auth for the authentication. I think this is the first part we're going to talk about today. Um, and probably the huge, uh, the biggest part that we're going to talk about today is the authentication. And the way I'm handling authentication is better auth. I think I already made a video about better auth, um, which quite took off. Um, also in context with Svelkit, I'm not sure if I did that, but basically how we work with better auth in Svelkit is we have this auth folder and we have a client and an index. And the client uh, basically um, exports an auth client and the index just exports an auth object. And the difference between these is that the client is consuming the um, the backend auth provider, while the client is um, can be called on the front end, and the uh, auth has an API. So if we go ahead and do auth dot um, API, for example, um, so yeah, then we have um, yeah this auth thing that we can call on the server. Um, yeah, I won't go over the uh, components and the database itself. I'm going to go over um, like kind of how I'm handling auth now. So um, the thing that I'm doing next is I'm going to, um, in my hooks.server.ts, which is kind of the middleware, uh, I'm setting my, um, my locals to um, the user in the session. So yeah, this is the way I'm passing a global auth state, which will be, uh, which is secure actually, or I hope it's secure actually. I mean, it's recommended, so it probably is secure. Call me out in the comments if it is not. Um, and this can then be consumed, for example, in my layout, where I just return session. And no, don't worry. Um, 
This is not like used globally. This is only used on this layout file. I don't use that anywhere else. Um, because it's generally not a good idea to put auth and layout if you don't know how to do it correctly. Um, yeah, I think the most, the most cool thing that I'm proud of that I made was that in on my layout, um, you can also set this get user. And this is kind of a different kind of thing because all of these other routes are kind of secure, you know, uh, I mean the homepage, either you are a user or you are not, and you will see um, on the homepage um, stuff based on if you're a user or not um, on the sign-in as well and on the profile I just check separately but in this in the club and then also in the uh, challenge section this is where things get a bit more complicated because you want to check if the user is an admin or not. You want to check if the user is actually a member of the club or if the user is actually a mem uh, member of the challenge. Um, and this all gets a little bit messy over time. So what I just did is that I have some util functions um, already prepared, but I also have this get user like f function that I've made in my utils.ts file, which I would highly recommend, like the functions that you use regularly put them in here. Also, for example, if I'm getting the leaderboard, um, I'm putting this in my index instead of writing it twice um, in two different kinds of server files. Um, and yeah, I can now go ahead and run uh, and return this user object down here. Um, and the cool thing is I can consume this in every um, child route. So for example, here, um, we have this function parent, and in this function, we could actually also go ahead and do user. And every time I would run this, this would theoretically go ahead and um, see if a user is actually signed in. And yeah, so this is kind of two functions or two um, functionalities. Either you just do that, and it will run all our layout load functions, or you do that, like. You can see this um, returns data from parent layout server JS functions. Yeah, so like I said, this can be consumed down below. Um, but what it also can be is that we just wait parent and then I can access this challenge from there. I mean, I wouldn't use this to um, make a global user and return that. But you can use it to, for example, do this challenge because I don't feel like writing this uh, one query statement all of the time, like uh, this one, um, which is specific to this challenge ID param right here. Um, and then we're gonna return this down here. Um, so stuff like that. And also for example, the challenge path, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna write this string out every time because I also kind of fear that I'm gonna mess something up. <laughs> to be honest, um, and also if the user is a club admin, and also if the current users in the club are not, um, this is also very important, um, and also if the current users in the challenge, of course. Um, yeah, one thing that I'm really proud of is that, for example, we are now, let's say we are now in a pretty nested route, as you can see here, and if I'm signed in, uh, if I'm signed out, as you can see, I'm getting redirected to this again. And this works on basically every route. And I'm very proud of how I implemented this. And I would recommend everyone to also implement this um, in their own code base because it's not really that hard. Um, so it all starts in this utils functions, a function where I actually also don't want, don't only like want the locals, but I also want to redirect URL. Um, and then I'm redirecting to sign in um, and the uh, URL search param is this redirect URL, um, which is um, ordinarily um, just the URL path name, of course. Um, and then in our sign in function, or in our sign in route here, um, we can actually go ahead and retrieve this redirect URL from the search params and then go ahead and do this. And the cool thing is that these redirect URLs, um, they work just fine. Better auth is 
coming in clutch here with this callback URL functionality. Because, for example, with GitHub, it would be a bit more of a headache. Um, uh, with um, Lucia, it would be a bit of more of a headache to hack our way around this. And I'm not sure how I could do this. But Better Off is, again, coming in clutch for this one. Um, so, yeah. Furthermore, uh, I don't know. Just describe your um, UIs like very well, like for example, your options and then generate invite link. Don't just display icons because especially for non-digital natives, this will be um, not so easy to understand, right? And do your accessibility and do stuff like that. And I think you're pretty much um, good to go. Um, I also recommend using stuff like Intel um, which is not Svelte specific, you can use this with everything, um, JavaScript or TypeScript, where you can basically date time format and then pass in a date, and it will output it pretty prettily down here, for example, or here. Um, or I think I'm also using it here. Ah, well, uh, here, for example, I'm also using it, like just date right here. Um, and it's like pretty um extensive like you can do full long medium short and they will all do their own things you can also choose time style calendar hour 12 hour cycle year stuff like that um yeah highly recommend this namespace i don't even know how this is called like, is it called an object or a namespace like it says namespace here but it's probably a class right um yeah yeah, also, like, rewrite your um, functions. Uh, don't rewrite your functions, but do a utils function here. And for server-related things, you can also just do that. Like, for example, getting the leaderboard. Like I already said, this could... Th this um, was kind of a headache to do. And I didn't want to have it twice in my copies and then if I'd made a change to one which I made because um I realized that something was wrong um and then not updating it in the other places kind of ass and so I just moved it to one file and then I have this big big ass leaderboard file um and also like for example to check if the user is an admin um always do this um, where you have a query and these things down here um for example yeah we're just checking for the club admin where um schema dot club admin dot user id is equal to the pair to this user id and then the club id as well make your life easier not harder and i mean this is kind of a complex project um this has been one of my or even probably is my most complex project like even more complicated at than the SAS that I've built. Um, and I had to be extra careful because there's actually kind of sensitive user data um, on this site. Um, and so, yeah, it's just kind of important that I made this right. And I think I did a pretty good job with this um, application here. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. If so, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. and. Also leave a like, um, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future, uh, future video. And we'll see you in the next one.